Hey guys, what's going on? This is Carlos, CEO of GAR Capital. Just taking a little time out of today to talk to my really good friend, Jose. He's one of our members of our premium service, our premium signals. So I went ahead with my social media team, put a DM, uh, an actual story up saying, we want to talk to real estate people and uh, ask some questions, maybe some questions you may have regarding buying real estate, maybe selling real estate. We're going to talk to Jose, who's a, who's a real estate agent in Arizona, and he's going to give us his feedback on where the market is going and everything like that. So it's going to be a really fun one. If it goes really well and you guys really like it, we'll talk to more professionals and uh, get their feedback on everything, help you guys out. Let's go ahead and get started with them. Request, let's go ahead and get him on. Hope everyone's having a good, good uh, session, a good day today. Hey, Jose, what's going on, man? What's up, what's up, Carlos, how are you? Good, good, man. So this one was something that a lot of people were really interested in. Again, real estate. I posted a lot of stuff on real estate. I've had a lot of real estate agents hit me up saying, thank you for posting on real estate, rates, sale prices, where everything is going, because it's important. Again, I know we talk a lot about stocks, we talk a lot about crypto, but you know what? Real estate is an asset, guys. It's important. Right. I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm an expert. I am not. I just finally bought my first home couple of weeks ago. What, I'm gonna be real, was a giant pain in the ass, guys, it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk to Jose, who is an actual expert, a real estate agent, who's gonna break us down and talk about the market, where he thinks it's going. I'm gonna ask a couple of questions and uh, hopefully learn something today. Jose, take it away. Of course, thank you first and foremost, Carlos from and GAR Capital for having me on board. Uh, super um, thankful to be on your show and of course talk about the real estate market. Now, uh, so I am uh, located in Phoenix, Arizona. We are the, one of the top five cities that are just burning hot right now in real estate, along with Nashville, Denver, Colorado, North Carolina. So we are at the, at the heat of the, this entire real estate market. But the reality is short inventory and low inventory is nationwide. It's not just us, Carlos. So everyone's suffering this problem. Um, some states are not dealing with it as bad, and I think those states tend to be like the Californias, the New Yorks, the states that were, in my opinion, have a really high cost of living, and people are starting to realize like, you know what, I could just move right next door to this state for a hell of a lot cheaper and buy a tremendous home for half the price that I would be paying for back home. Yeah, taxes too make a big part of it. I mean, states like California, New York, a lot of people from New York are coming to Florida, a lot of people from California are going to Texas, yeah, I mean, uh, we just saw a report today from the census saying that California and New York are going to lose seats in the House because of the population uh, lowering from California and New York. So a lot of your business, I'm assuming, are coming from people coming from California, maybe from maybe high tax states, maybe a Washington and Oregon. I mean, how do you deal with individuals that say, you know what, I want to move to a different market, but it's really just financial reasons. How do you speak? How do you tell this person that, you know, a home is just more than just a financial decision. You got to make sure this, the market is good for you. Uh, it's close to your job. Maybe it's good for your family. What do you tell someone like that? Right. So, and, and that's especially right. A lot of the people, at least in here in Phoenix, are coming from California, Washington, Utah, Colorado, a lot of these West Coast states, um, primarily California and Washington. Um, but realistically, it, there's much more to uh, moving across states than just buying a home, realistically. There's, there's so many components that you need to look at. Um, for us specifically, I need to tell people, can you handle 120 degrees this in the summer? Because you're going to need that freaking heat. It is hot out here. You're going to burn. You're going to burn. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to need like three layers of sunscreen out here. But besides that, we have great um, weather technology and things of that nature. But owning a piece of real estate, Carlos, it, it, like you said, it's a wealth builder. And it goes beyond, you know, finding that perfect home or being real picky about the area and location, just you, you got to just own it. At some point, you got to put the small stuff aside and just get your skin in the game and own a piece of real estate because the appreciation that we're seeing is just tremendous, especially for a lot of the people in my age group, a lot of the millennials that are starting to get out there and buy their first home. Uh, these are the people that I think are going to be, you know, the, at the most benefit 20 years from now when they see the uh, amount of growth they see in their home. Okay, so the elephant in the room. I don't, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have said this. It's a buzzword. Is this a housing bubble? <laughs> I mean, do you see a difference now? I'm pretty sure you've been doing this for years. Do you see any correlation from 2008, uh, the housing bubble, to now? Do you see any kind of similarities? 
What are some of the differences? I see some differences in regards to mortgage origination. I used yeah. to work at the bank with mortgage origination as well. The, the actual, I guess, the, uh, the foundation or of, uh, of lending was completely different than it is now. As someone who just got a mortgage for my home, I put 20% down, which I could do, thankfully. But a lot of individuals can't do that. Right. It's getting a lot easier now, would you say, than in 2008, or little, little differences? Uh, do you think the FHA program has helped a lot of individuals create that dream of buying a home? Or do you think a lot more conventional people just have more money now since they're staying home due to COVID? They're not going out as much. Right. So that's a really good question. The big elephant in the room, like you said, is the bubble. Are we in a housing bubble? Are things about to pop and then I'm going to be able to buy that 350 home for 200 grand next week, Jose? I get that question all the freaking time. And the reality is we're not. We're not in a marking bubble. The, and, and here's why. Um, well, there's actually quite a few different reasons why, but let's compare 2008 to today. Right. Back then, um, there's actually a chart that you can look up online called, called the mortgage index chart. And this is a chart that tells you realistically how easy or difficult it is to get a mortgage. Well, back in 08, I mean, if you were, you know, on the corner selling elote, you'd get a loan for a home. Like literally anyone could get a home for a loan and, or, or could get a loan for a home and then you'd be buying first one, two, three, four, five homes, then you can't keep up with the payments. So nowadays that mortgage index has gotten a lot higher. It's become a lot more difficult. And in a way, it's, it's a really good thing for anyone to qualify for a mortgage. So they check everything in between, between your assets, your job, your credit. And if you don't qualify, they'll straight up, you know, reject your application. So things have gotten, mortgages have gotten a little bit more difficult to attain from now than it was back 10 years ago. So that's the number one reason. The number two reason why we're not going to see a huge decrease in price is standard economics, Carlos. There's a high demand and a really low supply right now. That just always means higher prices for those. Now, let's talk about the other little mini elephant foreclosures, people that are behind on their mortgages, people that are in forbearances. Everyone's telling me, I'm going to wait for all these people to essentially lose their home for the bank to own it. And then I'm going to go in there and buy it for, you know, cents on the dollar. The reality is everyone has equity in this market. So if you're really that far behind, put your house on the market, sell it, and then you satisfy the bank and you're completely wiped out. Get a bid for someone. So here's my question too. Are you seeing a lot more individuals that are buying homes due to demand or is it wholesalers, maybe real estate investors, a lot of speculation or you're getting individuals saying, you know what, we need to upgrade our home. Yes. The majority, I would say about 70 to 80% of my business is just individuals like you and me buying their next home. And, and quite honestly, I wrote down a little, little reasons why the market really has kind of, it, it's done this, like it's straight up. There's no oh, denying. Yeah. Um, sure. The real estate market actually has been hot for about three, four years now, but it's just now started getting more attention. It just now started getting on the news. Now it just started, you know, now there's memes and TikTok videos and things of that nature really addressing real estate because we have hit the rock bottom low in inventory. We've never had such little houses, such of a low amount of houses for sale. And so when you combine that, and then you combine COVID with everybody staying at home, working from home, wanting to fix their home, looking around and being like, you know what? I want something bigger. I want something nicer. Number two. Number three, they see all their friends buying houses. And number four, you look at the rates. The rates are still, uh, they went up just a smidgen, but they, they're still like the, the lowest they've ever been. So realistically, you could get, like in my market, a $300,000 home for around, what 1300 bucks a month maybe 1400 bucks a month where a couple of years ago when you had a four and a half percent interest rate or even a four percent that same house would cost you 17 1800 bucks right all and those factors are just kind of coming together what's great about housing a lot of people kind of don't talk about this it really is for savings in a sense every time <laughs> you principal it's equity building in your home now again right. it doesn't always go up we know this from the real estate bubble but real estate tends to be extremely extremely stable I mean, the only thing that can really change is if, again, you get like waves of foreclosure or short selling around your neighborhood. But from your experience, you're not seeing that lately. You're not seeing a lot of individuals no. who are selling their home because they don't need to. 
Right, exactly. And and to piggyback back on the, back on the forbearances, um, when someone uh, so essentially, let's say someone is behind, they haven't made their mortgage payment in eight months, maybe it's been a year, and now they're gonna get hit with this twelve thousand dollar bill that they we all know that they don't have. Um, right. Essentially, they have three different options. You can do what's called a modification of your loan, which you know you may be able to call the bank and arrange for them to really modify your balance, either add it to the end of the loan, add it to your monthly payment, things of that nature. Number two, they're gonna put it on the market, like I mentioned, all you have to do is put it up for sale, satisfy everybody, and then you're free of that uh, amount. Or number three, they really do get foreclosed on, and then they, they maybe they just don't know, and so then the bank begins the foreclosure process. But that foreclosure process is not quick. It can take years sometimes for that entire process to take place. So for folks that I see left and right that are just saying, I'm gonna wait for things to go down, I'm gonna wait for the market to cool off a little bit. The reality is, in my opinion, I see things going the way they are until the end of 2023. After that, we might see a little bit, a little bit of a price correction, but guess what, what goes up when the housing markets go down, when the housing prices go down? Interest rates. So then you're in a position where Okay, you get a home for cheaper, but now your rate is higher and your mortgage payment is the same. So get your skin in the game and, and just own a home. So the best thing I would think that what you're saying is that it's very difficult to time the market. Go by exactly. based on need and your want, not based on economic factors. So let me ask you this. You're a real estate agent. Give me the three reasons why someone should not rent but own. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Well, in my market and in many, many markets that I've seen left and right, rents are skyrocketing themselves. I mean, you could rent a three bed, two bath for about a thousand, eleven hundred bucks in Phoenix. Nowadays, that same house is fifteen, sixteen hundred bucks a month, where your mortgage could be thirteen hundred bucks a month. So realistically, it's cheaper sometimes, not always, but for uh, most of the time, it is cheaper to own a home than it is to rent, at least in my market. Number two, you're really making your landlord rich, essentially. You're paying off their mortgage. Um, nothing against the landlords. I'm big on the real estate investment side. I, have, I work with many investors and I'm all for it. But if you are renting right now and you say, I'm gonna keep renting until the market cools off, well, in a year, you may, pay, you may have paid 12 grand in rent that could have gone to your principal on, on, on a home. Or house. Yeah, exactly. And then last but not least, of course, everyone's favorite part about owning a home is that it's your home. It's your bricks, your ceiling fans, your carpet. If you want to tear it up, that's up right. to you. But you want to hang a poster or you want to drill on the wall, you want to hang a TV, yeah. you don't have to ask the landlord. You yeah, do you it. Do your own home. Ain't no one telling you what you can and can't do with your home. Some of the comments here are actually really good. They were talking about lumber prices, and that's something that we've seen in commodity trading. Lumber prices are sky high. So yeah. again, also another issue for new homes you do you work uh, or have you seen anything in regards to the developers maybe a KB Homes or DR, yep. DH Horton which I own shares in DH Horton uh, yep. do you maybe some of those uh, those home builders that are catching up to demand where they're saying you know what we're gonna create some plots of land we're gonna start developing more we're gonna increase our developments to offset yes. this uh, Right. So quite honestly, I think that's going to be one of the, it, unless a bunch of people really just start to put their home on the market and we get more listings, we're kind of relying on these new builders to, to start the developments and start building houses quicker. The problem right now is a lot of these new builders, which I do work with a lot. I, have, I own shares of DR Horton as well. Just went under contract actually on a DR Horton property for one of my clients. And um, we're kind of relying heavily on them to build houses quicker so that the people who don't want to compete can just go buy a brand new home, whether it's six months to a year from now. But yes, lumber prices have a, a affected new builds um, quite a bit. Uh, just yes, just two days ago when I was at the new build office, they told me that they are canceling every two story that was meant to be built. And they're sticking only to one story homes because of that extra material. So you know, there's little trickle effects that are going to take place in the new build community due to these lumber prices. Um, prices will continue to rise. Um, out here in our market, they release lots and houses about every two weeks for new homes that are available. The builders cannot keep up with demand. They don't have enough manpower, time, 
you know, there's only one concrete guy in town, they have to, you know, take their turn type of thing. And so when the new builders are, are trying to keep, what they do is they, every two weeks, they release lots, they release land and they say, hey, you can come build your brand new home here. But what I'm seeing is every two weeks, the prices of these new homes are going up around 5,000 bucks. So talk about time in the market. I mean, the longer you wait, more likely. So let's say if someone is in the sidelines and he's, him and his partner or wife or whatever is watching and saying, talking to their family, saying, you know what, maybe we should buy a home, but they're really on the fence because of, pick your, pick your reason, right? Soaring lumber prices, the market is expensive, expensive to what, or we're not gonna get approved. What would you tell this person that has the capital to purchase their first home, they have good credit, what would you tell them in order to take that next step? What would hold people back from buying their new home? Right, so in this market, I mean, we're seeing a lot of people just saying things are just too expensive right now. But the reality is, if you have the capital to put up your own down payment, the capital to pay your own closing costs, and especially the capital to, wait, to um, offer any amount of money over the appraised value, which is what's you know popular nowadays as well, um, you should just be getting your skin in the game. I have a lot of clients, especially younger clients in, around our age group that maybe waiting for that perfect home. They don't want the one that has the, the, the yellow walls. They want the one with the white walls. They don't want the one with the closed concept. They want the open concept. And the reality is, if in this market, you're sitting on the sidelines and you have the ability and the money to buy a home, you really should just be getting your skin in the game. Finding that perfect home is damn near impossible. Every home has little things that can be tweaked out. At the end of the day, I mean, a home is a home. You can knock down a wall, you can rebuild it and make it exactly what it is that you want. But either whether you're hesitating because of the market, whether you're hesitating because of price, at the end of the day, these interest rates and continuing, um, you know, uh, rise in prices across the country, not just in Arizona, are going to, I think they're going to put you in, in, in a mode of, of FOMO, a little bit of FOMO. You might be feeling a little bit like, oh, darn it, I'm missing out. Why didn't I buy a year ago? Yeah, I think a lot of home buyers, just like anything else, let's say you're buying a car or anything like that, you should always focus on three things or four things that are priorities to you. You know, let's say you're all about that garage space. Hey, I got to put my hot rod here. Or I got to put my bikes here. I want to create a home gym. Okay, that should be your first priority. Or, you know, I really want two-story home as an example, or I really want a pool. You know, kind of narrow it down, but, you know, you're not going to get the perfect house, like you said, and that, that pretty much holds a lot of people back. Like, no, but it has to look like this, it has to look like that. Would you say, A, you know, to a prospective buyer, find three things that you really want in a home, then we can narrow it down from there. Exactly. The big things in a home, I, I, I definitely think that everyone should stick to their gut with. For example, how many bedrooms do you want? You know, location. Um, if if you, they have a commute to a certain, you know, to their work or things like that, I think location is important. I think the size of the home is important and quite, and, and, as long as the price is there too. If it's within your budget and your location and has a price for you and your family, just get the home. If you're out here, you know, oh, this is old, it, need, it needs work, it needs to be remodeled. In my opinion, those are my favorite houses to buy. I love ugly houses. I love me some houses that are not fully remodeled and decked out. Well, it needs some love, man. That's all it is, it needs some love. Oh, that's how I've bought all my homes. And you know, the one that I have now is from 1964, but a little by little, I've started to make all the changes that it needs. And in a year, I've already seen appreciation of $45,000 on my home. That's yeah. Amazing. If so, I read my kitchen, it can really go up to about a hundred. So I have two final questions before we wrap up this call. You're a busy individual. I got to do this after market recap for everybody. Sure. Number one, it's going to be recorded. I promise I'll post this on YouTube and I'll post this here. Uh, the, sec the first thing I want to ask too, in regards to buying a home, and it's a part of a suggestion I'm going to give people. Number one, don't buy a home on your own. Hire a professional. It is so damn important. Hire someone that you can trust because they're basically the person that's going to do most of the work for you. They're going to be your mouthpiece. That's so right. important. Uh, right. have, you have you heard any horror stories from individuals that have tried to sell their house alone? or have tried to buy a house on their own? Yeah, realistically, you should always hire a professional. You wouldn't go into a courtroom alone. You know, you wouldn't go into <laughs> a, you know, so you, you wanna hire a professional on the buying side in this market, you have to be creative. You have to be aggressive. The days of submitting a, 
uh, offer at list price and with no other really special treatment on that contract, it's just going to get you overlooked. And that's what I tell my team. That's what I tell my clients, that we have to be unique in the way we structure our offer. We have to do the things that others aren't doing. We have to be different and, and really creative. And quite honestly, if you're looking at a home on Zillow and you're like, I want to buy this and you just click contact that agent and then you and then you get paired up with someone you've never met before. Um, though they are professional, I also think that it's important to have someone who has experience and who's actually getting the job done. Um, on the selling side, yes, I have had people who have tried to sell the home themselves. No real particular horror stories of anyone getting nothing crazy, but the reality is if someone goes FISBO, as we like to call it in our industry, for sell by owner, FISBO, um, well, you're losing on quite a bit of cash that you could have generated by going with an agent. Because you, you don't, you realistically, without a comparative market analysis by a professional, you really don't know what your house is worth. Do not trust his estimates. Don't trust the red right. estimate. Don't trust what you're seeing online that says your house is worth. Because what Zillow doesn't know is that you updated your kitchen. Is your backyard a little bit bigger than the neighbors? Do you have a um, in-ground pool, for example? And so when you get a professional, we're going to go in there and tell you, hey, your house is so unique. We can list it for $30,000 more. And who knows? Maybe we might generate another thirty dollars just by getting a bidding war going. Absolutely. And that's something a lot of real estate people have told me is that if I say the word Zillow, they cringe. They're like, oh, don't tell me Zillow. Because... It makes people think that they know more real estate than it actually is. I remember I was searching for a home on Zillow. None of it was accurate. Not even close. The numbers have been adding up. The second thing, the last part, and then I'll let you go. Is it a good time for investors that are on this channel to buy a home for flipping versus cash flow? What do you recommend? You can only pick one. Which one would you pick? Cash flow, baby. Cash flow. And then I have one more. Do you think it's a good time to buy multifamily units? Sorry, Absolutely. last one. Yeah, one of my little minors in real estate is multifamilies. I love working with investors. I love helping them find duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, because essentially you have four doors in one location. Um, in terms of buy, buy, as an investor, if I'm looking at this market, am I dipping my toes? Am I staying away? What am I doing exactly? Me personally, I'm buying rentals all day long. Why? Because... Two different reasons. Number one, rates are extremely low. In mm -hmm. foreign fact, they went up just a little bit, but nevertheless, it, they're still low in, in compared to our history. So as an investor, you have to put 20% down for the most part on an investment property. So that's gonna yield you, let's use a $250,000 home as an example. A 250 home, 20% down, your mortgage payment is gonna be in and around 900 bucks, maybe a thousand. That home, in my market, will rent for about fifteen hundred bucks a month. So you're yeah. cash flowing, yeah, you're cash flowing three to four hundred bucks a month, which is awesome. And then you're gonna use that model and then just go do it over and over and over and over again until you have until you reach your goals, really. But uh, because of high rental rates, I definitely recommend buying and holding rental properties. At this time. So cash flow is king, to Jose, That's for sure. But one other thing, I want to just give a piece of advice to everybody who buys a home. It's not as simple as just buying a home. When you buy a home, there's a lot of hidden costs. Furniture, furniture you want to buy, different things you want to buy. You want to, you want to paint the room, whatever. There's homeowners association, homeowners insurance. When you're a renter, you don't have to worry about those things. But don't let that deviate you from the real benefit of being a homeowner. Also, we don't want it to just be this video of just FOMO your, your head into just buying a home tomorrow. No. Right. Obviously, weigh, weigh everything. If you're in Arizona, you speak to my guy, Jose, of course, and he'll take good care. But again, if you're in different sides of uh, the United States or wherever, you know, speak to a really good real estate agent who can assist you and answer your questions. I mean, this was an amazing conversation, man. You really opened my eyes to a lot of things. That's for sure. I wish I knew I, I had this conversation weeks ago. That's for sure. But yeah. um, if we could do this again, I'd really do appreciate it, man. Of course. And if I may leave off with one final quote that I've heard from, can't remember who said it, but it's one of the big billionaires in our world. I think it's Warren Buffett. The best time to buy real estate is always five years ago. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, if you bought a home five years ago, you'd be sitting on over $100,000 in equity for the most part. But who knows? Is that the future that we have now? Is buying something now setting you up for a ton of success in five years from now? 
standard economics tells, tells us that values go up and down, Carlos. But at the end of the day, a real estate, real estate is a long-term investment. You shouldn't think of it as, I'm going to go flip this, I'm going to go flip that. Let's see how much my house is worth in a year. It really is something that we hold on to. And in my case, we hand down to our kids and thereafter. So uh, thank you for having me on the show. I, I greatly appreciate you. Oh, the show, right? Cool. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like sure. I with stocks, guys. Buy and hold long term. Same thing applies to real estate. Be patient. Exactly. Sometimes good things sometimes take time, as always. Exactly. Thank you so much, Carlos. All right. Thanks, man. We'll talk soon, buddy. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye guys.